Hey, what's going on? Where are all my Conklin homies at, huh? That's right. That's right. Doing a Herbster special up here in Gaithersburg, Maryland. My new friend, Londell Luther, Luther Construction. Hey, I want to do a quick video. Um, well, I hope it's quick. It may not be very quick. Specifically for my Conklin guys. Um, I want to talk about and show you and just how to talk through my favorite setup, my settings that I really like whenever I'm working with the yeah, fastener grade. A couple notes when using fastener grade, um, in particular fastener grade, it's a, it's a very runny, not very viscous product, which is one of the reasons that we like it because it does such a nice job of getting into the little nooks and crannies of the fasteners. If it feels messy, go down to a smaller tip. If it feels slow or it's not moving, try moving up to a bigger tip. Um, that's the first thing you can do. The second thing is actually tighten down our packing set. Now, in a lot of cases, you can do that right here by turning the handle to the right. Or say you're using the tube and it feels slow or it's not coming out, give this like a little half turn to the left. And what you're doing when you're doing that is you're loosening these pack. If you're not feeling the packing's grip and get tight, what you need to do is go back to your pail, expel the material. You're gonna to wanna to push the packings all the way down, grab that thumb screw with your, fit, with your index finger, and then uh, turn this handle to the right till you feel it grab. That tight packing set will keep the material in the tube a little bit more controllable. As you're working, you might wanna speed up a little bit. Sometimes all you have to do is loosen this a little bit and it will allow that material to come out in a much faster, faster pace. Um, one thing you might try is to actually go faster. Believe it or not, sometimes that can actually settle it and you can get yourself into a much more quick rhythm going around each of the fasteners. So the roof tube is built for speed, okay? It's not so much built for uh, delicate precision. It's built to, it's built to uh, deliver these, these elastomeric mastics into the places that you need. How I think about these jobs where you have thousands of fasteners, what I like to do first, second. So the first thing that I love is these guys have their base coat down with their spun flex in. I like to get those seams addressed first. If I've got a bunch of fasteners that are wet and curing up on this roof, I don't really like my guys walking and stepping in the fasteners that we just did. Super easy to do whenever you're, you know, you're trying to lay out spun flex and spray that in. So first thing, obviously pressure wash, prime it, get those vertical and those horizontal seams done first, okay? After, the first thing that I like to do is seal those, the fasteners on the stitches of the metal. So it would be the, the side laps of the metal. Right? I like to hit these stitch screws first, all right? Then I like to go and hit the, the screws that are uh, on the flat that are attached to the purlin. And the reason for that is, I find that my eye and my body uh, figures out where those vertical seams are. And I'm not, again, I'm not stepping on those screws as I'm trying to address the other purlins. Whereas if you do these purlins, if you do the pur like here, here we actually did it wrong. So I've got these purlin lines right here. If I was to come back now and I was to be hitting uh, the stitch screws on these verticals, my eyeballs are kind of watching that seam. And it's real easy at that point for me to step on the low pan of that flute. Whereas if I switch it and I do the, the, the stitch screws first, there my, my eye can kind of catch that and I sort of hop over that seam. The other little tip here that I like is I really like working myself in rows if I can, especially purlin rows. I just feel like once I get into a flow, it just works. And my mind uh, has an easier time of keeping track of what I've actually done. I do prefer bronze quick cock if I can get it because I think it cures it cures much faster. So it's still April here in Maryland. So uh, white's okay, it's not a big deal, but it's just what we had. Uh, I have found that I, it depends on the day. Sometimes I like my 0.25 tip. Sometimes I like my point uh, four seven tip and it does depend on whether or not I'm using fastener grade or whether we're using seam grade the thing you can do to make your job site a little cleaner is I'll actually take just a four inch chip brush and I'll put the bristles up above and I'll, I'll actually screw it to the inside of the pail one of the things that you can do there is you can scrape that excess quick cock off of your uh, tube and make things just a tad more cleaner throughout the day 
So we are working on something called a shield pail. Uh, it's still not quite right. I'm still trying to get it nailed down, but what it'll do is you'll be able to screw the tube into it and uh, you'll be able to draw the material up through it and it will actually keep that covered. It'll keep your material covered, keep it from getting cured, but then also it will deliver the material into the tube without getting uh, the end of the tube all gunked up. That's, that's a pretty nice uh, clean, clean solution. We're working on that. Hopefully we'll have that here. So if it's super hot, like keep a pail of water handy and occasionally flush that tube. Second thing is get yourself some uh, Vaseline, pull that plunge rod out, get it like a nice little dollop on your finger and at the top rim of the tube, put, uh, I don't know, about a fingertip worth of Vaseline kind of around that. And then as you go to put the, uh, the plunge rod back in, uh, that will help lubricate the tube. You wanna envision that packing set almost like a uh, an Oreo going into a glass of milk. You want you want that to go in straight, not try to put it put it in horizontal. Hopefully that's make that's making sense. I'm, I should grab a tube and show you, but I'm here holding my camera. So um, you're gonna kind of put that in perpendicular to the orifice of that tube, and then once you get that in there, you're gonna kind of gently rotate it up, and then you'll be able to push it down. And if you've got enough Vaseline sort of at the end of that tube, as you push it down, it will help to lubricate the tube and you'll find that it'll make things a little bit more smoother. As you're really working with it and you have material inside of it, that material will end up lubricating the tube. Say you're up here, you're using a uh, fastener grade. Say you've got, um, you, you could actually draw that fastener grade up into the tube super easy and then expel it. That's actually something good to do almost every time you go to fill up your tube. Uh, before you, you end up running your fasteners, is to flush that thing, bring the material all up, flush it out into the, into the pail, and then bring it back up in. Sometimes it's good to just do that two or three times. What are a few no-nos when it comes to sealing screws? No-no number one, totally missing the fastener head. <laughs> Don't laugh, I've seen it, all right? Going too fast. If you got a guy that's missing fastener heads, he probably shouldn't be running the roof too, okay? Second no-no way way too much material this particular product is an acrylic product that thing might take two or three weeks to cure let alone whenever you come back to spray all this stuff that stuff is still going to be super soft your hose will run across it you'll rip it right open no no number three nowhere near the amount of material you you really need enough millage the whole way around which leads me to the most common no-no when it comes to sealing fasteners number four is not fully getting the material all the way around that fastener head. Can you see how that, that actually is right now, that is making that screw less waterproof because it's actually building mastic around the fastener head, blocking the water from getting around it, right? Super easy to do that, especially if you, if you got guys that are trying to go too fast. Make sure that their eyes are trained to watch out for that. that those almost look like little mini catcher's mitts to me when I, whenever I see them. So the good news is it's an easy fix if you find it. Sometimes you don't even need, need more product. You just need to reset your tip right over top of that fastener again.